Dr. Nana Banchidakwa, in his excellent dissertation on the transliteration of ancient Egyptian names into other languages, has made some very interesting suppositions, which could be applied, for instance, to unravel the origin in a limited scope of the name of the potentate, Ahi Kushi, or Ayi Kushi, that is Ayi the Kushite, who was supposed to have spearheaded, or at least led the final stretch of the migration of the Gadangwe people from ancient Egypt in the Great Dispersion or the Exodus. According to Dr. Dakwa in his book, The Africans Who Wrote the Bible, a lot of transliterations and assimilations occurred in converting names from the Aboriginal tongue into certain foreign languages. First, due to the unavailability of an exact alphabetical equivalent symbol in the foreign language or to a non-existent mode of pronunciation of the words in a particular language. Then comes the discovery of the inability of the non-African ear or tongue to exactly capture and accurately reproduce what Dr. Ahulu describes as the third pitch. The third pitch makes the pronunciation of most African names by the non-African tongue a bit difficult. A simple bisyllabic name like Tete is reproduced as tita, tata, titi, sometimes even with various unrelated accents. From Dr. Bachidakwe's hypothesis, it could be inferred that the name Ayikushi must have undergone some form of corruption of the ancient Egyptian Hebraic name Ahikush over a span of several centuries. According to Dr. Dakwa, the name Ahi is an ancient Egyptian Hebraic name. And the history of the tribe of the kingdom of Cush or the Cushites has well been documented in the Bible and in African history.